Eureka. Eureka. Reynolds. Dr. Reynolds? Uh, no, sir. I am John Moran, the attendant physician. To whom was he referring then? I don't know. He's been mostly incoherent since they brought him in. The delirium is due to a high fever. I detect a gash on his brow and a contusion on his head. Yes, well, after being missing for five days, he was found at Ryan's tavern. He was wearing beggar shoes and had no identification or belongings. Luckily, I knew who he was instantly. Everyone knows Edgar Poe, the great writer. Then you must also know of the writer named Rufus Griswold. <laughs> hmm, Griswold. Uh, mm -hmm. Can't say as I have. Uh, who is he? Oh, you. I bring you Rufus Griswold at your service. Reverend, are you here to give Mr. Poe his last rites? Oh, heavens. No. I was wondering when you anticipate he might expire. Soon. Unfortunately, he suffers from an inflammation of the... The ego? The brain. If you're not here as a matter of the cloth, are you here as his friend? As a matter of speaking, he entrusted me to be his literary executor and biographer. Oh, no! No! Ryan's Tavern, you say? <laughs> he was inebriated. He had not the slightest odor of liquor upon his breath or person. I sense a certain animosity towards my patient. What could he have possibly done to you? It is difficult to put into words. Oh, give it a try. He's often said that I'm not a good writer. And that's why you can't put it into words. <laughs> I recall something in Mr. Poe's Between Wakefulness and Sleep in which he wrote, no thought is out of the reach of language, and he never had a thought he could not set down in words with even more distinctness than as he conceived it. Thought is made logical by the effort of written expression, although he does conceive a class of fancies exists which are not thoughts, and we are aware of them only upon the very brink of sleep. You are a fan of his writing. I am. I am particularly fond of those who possess a gift for language. Well, sir, my gift for language will become readily apparent when I pen his obituary for the New York Tribune. I shall write. Edgar... Alan Poe is dead. He died in Baltimore. This announcement will startle many, but few will be grieved by it. I just had a thought. You will likely be the last person to see Mr. Poe alive, correct? Without a doubt. I could be a lucrative endeavor to go on a speaking tour as the doctor who treated Mr. Poe on his death. What kind of a doctor would exploit a dying man? This is so cold in here. To preserve all the dead bodies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, perhaps I should be going. <laughs> yes, I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> 